One area where it is really easy to become completely confused, particularly if you're a string player or a piano player or a singer or any instrument, if you play any instrument which is a non-transposing instrument, it becomes really easy to be confused when you start working with transposing instruments. Now, what do I mean by transposing instruments? Well, if we look at the score in front of us just now, you can see we have a brass quartet, trumpet, horn, trombone, and tuba. And they're all using the same key signature. And you can see that the first note in the trumpet part, for example, is a B flat. And if I play, click on the B flat, it plays a B flat to us. Everything is fine. However, for the trumpet player to have to sound like a B flat, it doesn't play a B flat. I can show you this in two ways. If I go to the list of parts over here, go to the trumpet part, you can see that the first note, the trumpet part, is actually a C. And the key signature is different as well. Similarly, another way I can show you is on the Home tab, if I click on the Transposing Score button here, this will show me what the, each individual players in the score will need to see to play to sound correct, to sound with the notes that I want to hear. And you can see that the trumpet player has a C for the first note, and the key signatures are all different as well. The trombone and tuba are in the original key signature because they are non-transposing instruments. The horn transposes an F, so his key signature has changed. And the trumpet transposes in B flat, so his key signature is different from that. Undo the transposing score, so we're now non-transposing. They're all in the same key signature, and this is what they will sound like. Immediately, some people will start to be confused. However, it can become more confusing when you start to add notes to, for example, in this case, the horn part. So let me show you. By default, this is the way Sibelius is set up, and I'm going to just put the notes in as you would expect me to do so. Now, the issue that we're going to uh, demonstrate only becomes an issue when you're using a MIDI keyboard. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use step time input. If you don't know what step time input is, there's a separate video about it. So, let's start. I want the first note, I always put the first note in with the mouse, and I want the first note to sound like an F. So I'll put in an F. Because remember, I'm in a non-transposing score at the moment. From now on, I'm going to use my MIDI keyboard. So my next note is going to be a G. Then another G. Then an A. Then a G and an F, change it to a 4 beat note, F to finish, and escape. The notes you heard it playing there are the notes that I want it to sound like. So when I hit P, it all sounds very nice, and everything is absolutely fine. If I go to the horn part, for example, though, notice that on the score the first note's an F, but on the horn part, the first note's a C. Because that's what the horn player would have to see to sound like an F. Now, let me just come out of this. Let me just uh, delete those notes. I don't want to remove the part, so I'll hit no there. We're back to where we started. Where we can sometimes have an issue though, some people prefer to work from a transposing score. So they're seeing what the players would have to see in front of them to play the notes. Problem then is, if I put the first note in with the mouse again, I know I have to put a C, and that sounds the same. But if I now play, remember the second note was a G. Oh. I've just played a G, but it inputted a D. You can see how that could very quickly become very confusing. Let me show you why that has happened. First of all, I'll delete these two notes again. And that has happened because on the Note Input tab, because remember we're inputting notes, on the Note Input tab, this wee box here says Input Pitches either sounding, which is what's selected, or written. So when we're working on a non-transposing score, 
we want the notes to sound right. So this should be set to sounding. However, when we're working on a transposing score, we want the notes that we play to be the notes that are written. So we want them, in this case, to input the written pitches. Again, I'll put the first note in. But now whenever I play the next note on the keyboard, I'm going to play a D. And it shows me a D. Because I've changed that input pitches to written. So that's all going to be fine. The next note's going to be a D. Then an E. Then a D. Then a C. And my four beat note at the end is a C. And that will now sound correct because I know if I go back to there and change my transposing score back to non-transposing, that's the notes I had originally. So there's a definite correlation between, you've got to be aware of the correlation between the transposing score button and this option here. If you get completely confused, which isn't uh, unheard of, if you go to this button here and just hover your mouse over it, it brings up a description. And it's worth getting to know that description. It's worth reading that and understanding it. So that's just one wee thing to be aware of when you're inputting notes using a MIDI keyboard. If you put notes in and the wrong note appears, have a look through this option and you may find that that's where the problem lies.